Hi, it's Ashley from Sweet Dreams Bake Shop and welcome back to another vlog style video, a full weekend of baking. But of course, it started off with me inviting my sister over for a little brunch. She said that she was going to bring the bagels and then I provided everything else. After a nice leisurely brunch, it was finally time to get started on all of the Easter weekend baking that I had planned. And what I really loved about this weekend of baking is I kind of just came up with things that I wanted to make as I went along. And I didn't really have to do a huge grocery shop. I kind of just loaded up on butter and eggs. So, you know, pretty much just bought packs of gold. And then I started preparing things that I knew were crowd pleasers in my family and on my husband's side of the family and things that I, of course, want to eat as well. And that always starts with these brown butter chocolate chip cookies. So I decided to get that butter browned right away. In those first shots, I was getting all of the lemon stuff ready for lemon bars, which is something that I very, very rarely make. I find that I tend to stay away from more simple baking like bars and brownies, and I very rarely record myself if I do make those things. But now that I feel like I have more freedom and I don't have to constantly be making specific tutorials, I just have been making more of those things. And I gotta say, they're delicious and they're just as good sometimes as a fancy dessert and sometimes even better. Now, like I mentioned, I don't frequently make lemon bars, so I wasn't really sure what the bottom of this lemon bar was supposed to look like. But when I first did it, it really wasn't right at all. It was super, super dry and mealy. And at first I thought, well, maybe it's just kind of like one of those really dry tart shell type things and it will come together. And I was looking at the different pictures for this recipe. It looked a lot more put together than mine did. So I decided to just randomly add in more chunks of butter. Luckily, it ended up working out. I don't really recommend that when you're following a recipe. I think maybe if I had used a food processor, which I normally do for things like pie crusts, it might have come together a little better than using my hands. After the lemon bars were ready to go into the oven, it was now time to get my chocolate chip cookies going. And of course, we all add mini eggs to every single thing during this holiday, which is exactly why I went with the chocolate chip cookie because I wanted to incorporate as much Easter as possible everywhere and anywhere, and mini eggs are the easiest way to do that. Also, these micro mini eggs are definitely the way to go. Before I was just taking the regular sized ones and then crushing them up, you might have seen me do it in a video or two, but these micro mini eggs, I don't even have to crush them, and they turn out really, really beautifully in the chocolate chip cookies. I also added in more chocolate because you can never have too much chocolate in my world. Whenever I know there's going to be a lot of desserts at events, I try to make the portions small so that everyone can have a taste of something. So I went with my smaller cookie scoop. Sometimes this kind of hurts my hand. But luckily I had my little helper here to help me out with the decorating part. He really, really wanted to help me make all of the Easter desserts, but some of them were a little bit more complicated than others. I was surprised because his cousins were over and he still really wanted to help bake. It's so interesting because with my daughter who's a couple years older, I really encouraged her to help me out in the kitchen, but she lost interest and sometimes she still likes to do things, but not as much. So I really didn't think to ask Landon to come and help me out in the kitchen that frequently, but he's the one that constantly wants to help me. Good. Yeah. So good. It's so much gooder than me. I can't really remember what he was saying was so much gooder than him, but I thought it was a cute little thing that he said, so I decided to leave it in. Because those micro mini eggs blended in so well into the cookie dough, I really, really wanted to make sure that people could tell that these were Cadbury mini egg chocolate chip cookies, so we decided to add those on to each one, and of course, a nice, generous layer of fleur de sel. My sister and her kids went home and I continued to bake. So here I'm making my classic sugar cookie recipe. You can check out that in the right hand corner. And I tend to add things to my sugar cookie recipe if it's some sort of holiday. So this time around, I decided to add some lemon zest, fresh lemon zest. And I also added a bunch of sprinkles as well, which you're going to see in a bit here. Now, the lemon was a really, really light flavor. I could tell when I bit into the cookie that there was some sort of lemon or citrus flavor, but I wouldn't say it was a huge punch of lemon. I think if I wanted a punch of lemon, what I should have done was taken some dehydrated lemon slices, which I've done before, and then I puree them, and then I put them right into there. Since we were already having lemon bars, I felt like it wasn't a huge deal that there wasn't a big punch of flavor in these cookies. And I was mostly making these for aesthetic purposes, if I'm being honest. I just love incorporating sugar cookies, even though it's really not my family's favorite, but it really helps brighten up the dessert table. 
and the children absolutely love them on both sides of my family. But honestly, I brought some of the leftover cookies to my staff and they just gobbled them up. I was so surprised. All right, so there are random messes everywhere as per usual on one of these baking weekends. So it's time to clean everything up. I still have a good amount of time. I'm supposed to go hang out with my friends at 4.30. It's 3.19 right now, so I'm hoping that I can get this whole kitchen clean in about half an hour or so, and then I'll head out. I was super relaxed on this day because it was kind of a bonus day. It was the Friday, and so the Saturday was when I was going to have my first event. So I felt like I was super on top of things, and I was very, very happy that I was going to get this all clean before going out. Nothing makes me feel better than being able to clean up the mess and then come home to a clean kitchen. It also makes things so much easier the next day because I don't feel like I have to clean everything first and then mess it up again so soon after. All right, day two of yesterday was actually fairly relaxing. Just got things kind of prepped and ready to go. Today, we need to have a little bit more go today. So I've got the dough out of the fridge. It usually only takes about 30 minutes of thawing if it's been in there overnight. But if I leave it out for a little bit longer, it's not going to hurt it. It is also fairly cold, so it's not going to go to mush or anything by the time I come back. Everything will be ready to perfectly cut out and we'll get started on the other desserts. But for now, off to the gym. I have been really into the routine of going to the gym early in the morning and then coming back and doing whatever it is that I need to do with my day. And yes, I have been wearing Barbie clothes all throughout this. Ever since I had my Barbie party, I've just been kind of living in the long pajama pants and the shorts that I bought along with the hoodie and yeah, I'm just living the Barbie life lately. Are you guys going to see the new Barbie movie? I really think it looks super fun. I'm not a huge movie person in general, and when I do watch movies, it tends to be something like a drama or a thriller, but this one just looks like pure fun, so I want to see it. So the first thing that I actually wanted to knock off my list of things to do was making the pico de gallo. So if you watched my Instagram stories, then you know we had kind of a Mexican food themed party. It mostly was like a taco bar. And if you watched my short, then you know it was a little bit of a debacle. This whole theme here did not sit well with everybody. But I will say that after everything was said and done, people really enjoyed it. And it was super, super delicious, super flavorful, and I was really impressed with my family as a whole. I think my family are actually made up of really, really good cooks. It's just my immediate family that really isn't into cooking from scratch at all. I actually remember as a young kid, we often ate Lunchables at school. We were given cold burgers for lunch. I had chips in my lunch almost every single day. And everyone around me always had like fresh cut up veggies and fruit and they would just look at my lunch like they wanted it so badly and I remember wanting their lunch so badly. My mom really didn't like it when we dirtied dishes or used the stove. We had a gas stove so it was incredibly hard to keep super, super clean. And so we often ate things like frozen meals that you just put into the microwave or eating soup out of cans. I very rarely witnessed my mother ever cooking. I think the most I ever saw her cook was like instant ramen or a sandwich. So I had this perception for a long time that we just weren't a family of cooks, but it turns out my extended family actually really, really enjoys cooking. Myself included, though I feel I of course identify more as a baker, but anyway, when we went to this event, all of the food was super, super flavorful, the meat was so tender, and it was just a good time overall. Anyway, back to the baking and the desserts. This is at the moment where I discovered I don't have enough Easter cutters. I need some more new Easter cutters, and that is exactly what I am going to load up on once everything is on sale, which I think it is right now. So perhaps after I'm done editing this, I'm gonna go and get some more Easter cookie cutters, if you can believe that someone like me needs more cookie cutters. I wish it hadn't been so noisy at my house at this point because the crunch that you can hear when you press in to sugar cookie dough that has a little bit of sprinkles in there is just so, so satisfying. I feel like whenever I do a bunch of sugar cookies, it's always this little dance between getting everything else ready in those down times. While those sugar cookies were baking, I knew I had to get all of these cookies away so that I could save space. As we've learned many, many times, whenever I do events and things like this, I run out of space very quickly. So I was trying to make sure that I had as much space as possible. Now, because I wasn't doing anything nearly as chaotic, I knew I'd have enough space for everything today. See, look at all of that counter space. So white and so clear. 
Now, I can't exactly remember who I was talking to. I think it was my friend Rachel because I can tell from my facial expressions, I'm very adamantly talking about something. And what I'm making is some classic vanilla cupcakes. I was originally going to do this fully dulce de leche infused cupcake, but then I decided I just want something easy and I know my cupcake recipe super, super well. So I'm just going to make classic cupcakes and then fill them with the dulce de leche. And no, I didn't make my own dulce de leche, so I just bought it. And then I made a little mistake with these. Yeah, see, it, it just broke a little and I was sad about that, but we recovered. I just got them really nice and small, like I said, controlling the portions so that everybody can have a little bit of everything. And once again, doing a lot of multitasking here. Funny thing about multitasking, I remember I saw something once and I'm pretty sure it's true, but don't quote me on it, but apparently you can never actually multitask, like your brain can't think of two things at once. It's more like your brain is just switching quickly from one thing to the other. I guess I'd believe that, but every time I think I'm multitasking, I'm like, oh, but I'm not really multitasking. My brain is just switching back and forth. Now, to be honest, looking at these lemon bars, they were kind of ugly. They weren't the nicest thing ever, but when you put the powdered sugar on it, it just goes from like a five to a 10 out of 10. And I realized those edges look a little bit well done and I bit into them and it just had a bit more of a caramelized flavor, which I was very, very thankful for. Nothing is worse than when you spend time on something and then it ends up burnt. Look at these beautiful Easter pastel colors. I decided to go really pastel because no one likes it when your mouth turns a really, really dark color. This isn't to say that I don't like using vibrant colors from time to time too. Sometimes I do think it's necessary, but when you have the choice, just go ahead for the pastel colors. And I'll have a full tutorial on those sugar cookies, but for now, I'm just gonna give you a glimpse of what I actually made. These mini bunnies were probably my favorite part of the entire thing. After taking a couple of hours to finish icing those, I started on the whipped cream, which is the topping I was going to use for my cupcakes. No butter cream for the cupcakes for my family. They love a good whipped cream topping, which isn't too sweet at all. Also, look at these beautiful lemon bars, yes. And here's the dulce de leche, my, my cheater dulce de leche. And I had a variety of mini and large cupcakes. I don't know why I made so many cupcakes because honestly, I, I don't think that I even thought that half of them were going to get eaten. I just love the look of it, you know? And then I always think if there's extra, no big deal. But if there's not enough, then that's a big deal to me. So I went ahead and I filled these up with dulce de leche and then there is the whipped cream on top. This came together so beautifully. Again, though, I do live in a fairly cool environment right now, so I don't recommend going with just a whipped cream topping if it's quite warm outside, but I didn't have to add stabilizer to this or anything, and I love that it didn't get too curdly either. Sometimes I haven't had the best luck with whipped cream, so I was super, super happy that this turned out well the first time. And I was rushing here. Even with my bonus day, somehow the time got away from me. And here I was just stuffing cupcakes with fresh raspberries. I thought this would be a nice little addition as well. Fresh fruit with cupcakes, yes, A plus. D despite what my sister may think. If you've watched my shorts, then you know my sister is very afraid of fruit, does not like it at all. And she did avoid those raspberry ones like no other. As I was getting all of these things ready, I was also making a cheese sauce at the same time. I was really rushing. We had about like five minutes left and I just kind of whipped the cheese sauce together as I was whipping this dulce de leche buttercream at the back. I'm sorry that I didn't get myself filming me making this, but like I said, I was rushing. And on top of that, it was super rainy on this day. So it just made it that much more difficult to get all of the stuff that I prepared inside of my cousin's house for the big event. But everybody, enjoyed everything and almost everything went off without a hitch except for the fact that I forgot some of the Easter macarons that I had prepared earlier. But have no fear because this now brings us to Sunday. And fun fact, the dress that I'm wearing, I quickly purchased right after I went to the gym. I just kind of went to the mall to pick up a few last minute things. And I found that dress for like $10. So I was like, yes, that is what I want to wear. I've lost several inches and can now fit back into my wedding dress, which is great. A lot of my clothes no longer fit me. So I was thrilled when I saw this dress. I didn't have time to try it on, but luckily it did fit. 
So here I am getting all of the candies and chocolates ready for Easter. This is probably my favorite part of this whole entire weekend. I just love getting all those treats ready and these are the ones that are going to be for the adults. We have a really great chocolate company here in Vancouver, Canada called Purdy's and the chocolate is so good. It's a little bit pricey, but honestly, I rather spend more money than spend less and get a lot of so-so chocolate that I probably will never want to eat. Then I had some iced coffee because I needed a little pick-me-up and here are those mini bunny sugar cookies that I made. I'm planning on putting these on every single table space so that everyone can have a little treat. I also call this packaging a huge win because I originally purchased them for something else and they were too small so finally I found a cookie that was just small enough to fit inside of here. So if your buttercream is ever way too cold coming out of the fridge, just put it on a double boiler system and it'll kind of look like this soupy mess and you'll get all worried that you've gone too far, but eventually it'll whip up beautifully. While my dulce de leche buttercream was whipping up again, I finished up packaging the cookies and I put these really cute little thank you stickers on the back of each one. I was hosting for my husband's side of the family, which is such a rarity, especially after 2020. I don't think we've hosted one big thing because we've just been going to, you know, our parents' houses. So finally, I decided that I was going to host this year. And my mother-in-law said that she really wanted us to have a big sit-down dinner because at their house, it's a little bit more casual just because of the way that the layout is. So I really, really tried my best to make sure that we could fit in all of the table space here. My house too has kind of a weird layout. I find this is the way it is with newer builds, but I think we managed to do it. Looking back at all this footage really makes me want to go back in time. It was just such a fun family filled weekend and I was just having such a good time, especially on this day, really low stress, low pressure, and just I got to make beautiful desserts and that's what I love to do. And you know what makes it even better? The fact that I only had to move the desserts about three feet and I didn't have to pack anything away in cars and I could just put them on my own beautiful stands right away. It just, it, it makes the whole experience so much nicer. Hey guys, welcome to my video. So today we're making all these Easter desserts and I made these cupcakes <laughs> and I made those. <laughs> and now I'm gonna make some sugar cookies. <laughs> Somebody asked me on YouTube the other day, what does Alia do for your family exactly? And other than providing us with that great entertainment that you just saw, she is a friend of mine. We actually started baking together a long time ago, but we started doing videos maybe a couple of years ago together. But I would say in the last year, we started socializing with each other a lot more. And today I actually invited her over for Easter because she's never celebrated Easter before. Guys, what we're gonna do is we're going to put stencils on the. What's what? What is there a problem with that? Let me switch. Yeah, she wants to sit next to me. And a strange but true fact: Alia and my daughter are the same amount of years apart as Alia and I are. So here I am teaching Alia how to use the stencil genie. She actually had never used one before, which I was super surprised at because she works at a bakery. She still currently works for my friend Rachel. And she is officially a Red Seal pastry chef, which is just super cool. I've got to fit that fact in whenever I can, just because I'm so proud of her accomplishments. Anyway, so we are continuing on with the mini cupcake fun here. As you can see, my daughter and my son really wanted to help me with that this time, and Alia got going on making all of these stenciled. I really didn't know what I wanted to do with these. I finished most of the sugar cookies the day before, but these ones I left blank because I wasn't really sure. I knew I wanted to use the stencils, and I actually had bigger plans for those sugar cookies, but I just wasn't feeling it. You know, when it's not a sugar cookie decorating day in your heart, then I feel like you just, you just got to take a step back and do whatever it is that you want with them. That's exactly why when I used to have giant cookie orders due, you couldn't just not do what it was asked of you. So that part was always very stressful. Same kind of idea with these raspberry cupcakes. Originally, I was going to whip up more whipped cream because I ran out, but I decided I have so much of this buttercream left over. I don't want it to go to waste and I don't want to have to waste time making it again. So I just decided to use up what I had. Then my husband took the kids out so that I could get this all set up with Alia. We were putting tons of treat baskets together. Their cousins were coming over too, so I made sure to have treat baskets for them as well. And we were setting up an Easter egg hunt. 
some of the guests arrived really early, about 45 minutes early, so I kind of looked like this, didn't have my hair done, didn't have my makeup done, but luckily they're a very chill family, so I was able to just get what I needed to get done, and then I was able to get ready. I was originally going to package these cookies, but because they had just been freshly airbrushed, I decided against it because then the airbrushing would just come off on the packaging if I tried to rush it, so I decided to lay them out as a centerpiece. I really do wish that I had a large dining room so I could just have one big solid table, but this setup was pretty good and people were still able to have a conversation with one another. After everything was set up, I quickly got ready, I rushed upstairs, did my hair, did my makeup, came back down in about 10 minutes, and then it was time for egg hunting. I remembered this time around to bring out the mini egg macarons that I made and you might also recognize those battle ends as well. We made those for the Little Mermaid party but I had a bunch that were frozen because we made way too many of those and it was the perfect time to bring it out. Here's the turkey. I was so happy that there was not a lot of turkey drama this year and everything just looked so delicious. We tend to do it a little bit potluck style. Oh, and I always make sure to give out gift boxes at the end so that people can take all the leftovers because I am not having that much dessert in my house. I need to keep the dessert train moving in this house so that I can make new things for all of you. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so you can be part of the Sweetie Fam. Right now, I'm uploading weekly, so make sure you hit that notification bell so you know when I upload. Also, be sure to comment, request, or ask a question. I love hearing from you guys. And uh, also, these cookies got into an accident. And I'll leave you with one final clean kitchen shot. Bye!